in turn, you can look for you and me. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him for the sound of the trumpet. Praise him for the salty and the heart. Praise him for the temple and hand. Praise him for the stream of instruments and the water. Praise him for the loud sound. Praise him for the high sounding sound. And everything that had breath. Let everyone that has breath praise ye the Lord. Yeah, baby. 
Oh! 
Come closer. Come closer. Uh, I want to show you something. I want to show you my goodness, my mercy. I want you to see the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the Lord for Sister Lord in that song. That's his calling us. He's calling us. Amen. I would like for you to go into the room today for scripture. And the first one is to James. Good chapter. Verses 16 and 3. And it's with Dr. James, beginning at the 16th verse. We praise the call of your God, the grave of your God, that you may be healed. The effectual, good prayer of righteousness of your own friend. The action was the pain to write passions in the field. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth for the space of two years and six months. He prayed again that heaven gave rain, that earth all for of my food. This all was given to me that my soul was refrained from the spirit spoke to us, speaking my sleep. 
everything is done. And I believe this call, this message, you guys out there, this is an individual that is with a lost one. That God is going to send you out to bring this time. Let me look at Elijah. Praise God. Elijah was a man sent to be some prophet of Israel. His name is God is the Lord. My God. He is the Lord. Praise God. Elijah was introduced to us in 1 Kings 17, chapter verse 1. It says, Elijah was just come. Just come. Who was a
Now we know that the uh, John the Baptist brings up that he did that. First chapter 17 verse, but it says John the Baptist would go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of the life. But that's not what I believe was another kind of speaking of because the smoke of the bread people of the Lord. And when the Lord came this first time, he came in grace and food. But the next time he comes, he's going to be sword. It is going to be a bread for day for this world, praise God. And again, the night of his spirit back to the transfiguration of Jesus. The Bible told us that Moses and Elias and Elijah, praise God, appeared to Jesus and they talked to them, praise God. And so, amen. Then Jesus asked the disciples, St. Matthew chapter 16, chapter. He said, when Jesus came to the post of Caesarea of Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, is? They said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, son Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or brother of the prophets. Israel expected something great from Elijah because of the prophecy that was made. Concerning him. Even when it came to John the Baptist, when he was doing the work of God, the Pharisees sent to John the Baptist and asked him, Are you Elijah? Praise God. Hallelujah to God. And John the Baptist had to say, No, he wasn't Elijah, but he came in his power and he came in his spirit. Praise God. When you look at that text, praise God, from the first, first Kings at 17th chapter. At first verse, they said, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inheritance of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel, your religion, before whom I stand, there shall not be food or rain in the but according to my religion. He made a confirmation before the king of Israel that it wouldn't rain. Praise God until he said, according to his word, God has sent him, gave him a mission that it was going to be a drought. And that drought was there because of Israel's disobedience. They didn't obey God. But God wanted to use Elijah in his great work. God had a mission for him to do, just as he has a mission for you and I to do. And in order for us to accomplish the, the mission, the work, the goal, hallelujah, the job that God has given us to do, it takes preparation. And when we look at Elijah, praise God, he was just like you and I. He wasn't special in no way, praise God. As a matter of fact, there, is, there isn't a book in the Bible that is named in honor of him. He didn't have it like the other prophets. God saw something in Elijah. Amen. God put something in Elijah. That wasn't in, praise God, the rest of the prophets. He had a boldness. He had a love. He had a desire to please God. And I read the scripture when it says that if a man prays, and that's going on, so please God, praise God. But if he prays, please God, God to do something special. Hallelujah. He'll protect you. But he also. Uh, uh, take us through different process and preparation to do the great mission. Praise God. The first preparation for Elijah was, and it doesn't seem logical that God sent this man to tell Ahab that, that he, he was going to call the curse on Israel because of their disobedience. Then, praise God, in the next sentence, or uh, right after the telling of Roland and Hyde. Hallelujah. And we don't understand what God does always, but God has a way of doing something, praise God. God has a way of preparing us for his work. He said, the work of the Lord came to the night and so did I hide, praise God. And, and he said, you'll break from the book. And I wanted the ravens to feed you, hallelujah. You know, some people won't want that. I, I know buzz and I know crow. They don't want to do it. We do sometimes at 20 ourselves to receive the things that 
God will have for us to go in the direction to follow the path that the Lord has put forth for us. Praise God. It just don't seem logical. Praise God. That God was going to make me run and hide and drink from a brook. Praise God. And then the ravens going to feed you. And you know what God gave me the uh, pastor told me yesterday. Praise God. As you were talking, he said, the Lord gave you a vision. He'll give you the provision. Praise God. He'll give you just what it takes to fulfill the vision that he gives to his people. God is there and he knows he leads us in a way that he needs to go. And the Bible confirms that the ravens brought him bread for me morning, amen, and night. God prepared him in the, in the death. Sometimes you got to be by yourself. Be in a place that you can't talk to nobody but God. Sometimes you got to be in a position that maybe not just talk to God, but be in a position that you don't get that other shout sh sh from other people that you can listen to God. But God won't call us, amen, in our life. But he won't bless us to do But again, the book dried up. Hallelujah, God. The provisions dried up. But the Lord was still there. He told me to go to Jeremiah to this little woman. And, and, and I'm going to plan this woman to take care of you. She's going to feed you, praise God. There was a famine in the land. Hallelujah. It's a famine. Three, three open families. We are, I believe that we are still in a famine here. With this cold and loss of job, the economy. Praise God. Everything is going down. Praise God. But I believe the rain is coming. Hallelujah. God is going to make a way, amen, our harvest, our harvest is going to, amen, our harvest is coming, praise God. So when the brook dried up, he sent it to this good woman, and this good woman and her son, praise God, had just a little bit of food to, to eat, praise God, that last meal, that last supper, we're going to fix this last supper, and we're going to die. But the prophet of God, the woman of God, had told him that, this woman was going to provide hallelujah for him through this, through this hard time. He told us, you know, just fix me hallelujah first. Fix me a little bread. Fix me a whole cake of bread. Hallelujah to God. And I eat, then you go and fix your son something to eat. Praise God. And this woman had faith enough in the pocket of God that she went for. Praise God. I don't know if she fell well, but God, anyway, if I die today or tomorrow, I'm still going to die. Amen. It was right. Amen. The, the three men with the lepers. Praise God. Why stand here and die? If you go into the city, amen, we might die. But if, but if we stay here, we're going to die. And she stuck out on faith. And she fixed, amen, the problem of God food. And the Bible tells us in that 14th verse, it said, for this is what God, the Lord our God in Israel said. That your jars of power will not be used up, and your jug of oil will not run dry until the day that God gives rain. I say the rain is coming, Paul. Hallelujah. The rain is coming. Amen. And then, God, after all this, this woman take care of Elijah and made a place for him to live in her son. She made the prophet. Prophet that. It's your fault. Amen. That my son died. Praise God. He fell up through the dad. Um, he told him to bring his son. And he took him upstairs into the law that this woman had prepared for him to stay. Praise God. And he, he began to pray and lay over his son. And he cried out to God three times. I said, God is preparing us for the rain. Amen. The things that we're going through is in preparation for the rain. Hallelujah. God is taking us to a place that we can do. Hallelujah. The things that He wants us to do. God wants to show us something. He wants to squirt through us. God wants to move in our lives. And after the third time, praise God. And I can cry out to God to put breath back into this child. And God heard his breath. Hallelujah. God heard. That's what they're saying. Amen. The fervent, uh, effectual, and the fervent prayer of righteous men. God will hear your prayer. Amen. When you go about it in the right way when you're serious. Amen. You can't just recite something from a book. It got to come from your heart. It got to be for real. Amen. You have to talk. 
Trump is God. Back to him, he's low up. Hallelujah. We can pray. We can do it to God. And God brought back, back to that child. Praise God in that child. Praise God that God just brought him back down to that his man. Then, praise God, God was ready. Amen. For them to face Ahab again. Thank you gotta remember now. Now he can put this, put this uh population on Ahab and his people. Amen. Ahab has sent people out all over in every country in the area looking for uh, Isaiah to kill him, praise God. And that's why God hid him. He wouldn't have had that Isaiah. He looked for that Ahab, praise God, and Jezebel kill him, praise God. God hid him out. And as a matter of fact, when God sent him, he sent him to a far country. Amen. Sometimes we might feel as though we're in a far country that we don't have anybody, nobody around us, but God had us in that place. For a reason, hallelujah. And all things work together for the good of those who love the law and for those that are the call, uh, hallelujah, according to his purpose. God right? have a purpose in our life. He's not just toying with us, he's preparing us, amen, for great things. Glory to God. He's preparing us for the work that he will have us to do. So Elijah, praise God, went up to Obadiah and told Obadiah to go tell uh, uh, Ahab to come and meet him. But Obadiah was afraid to tell him. But he put that crown and he went and told. And hallelujah, Obadiah went what the prophet had said and told my brother Ahab what the prophet Elijah had said to him, praise God. And, he, and so he went and took, told him, and this is what uh, the, uh, the king of Israel said. God now he that trouble Israel. Praise God. You the one who caused this trouble to come upon us. But uh, Elijah's response to him in that 18th verse said, I'm not made, I didn't make trouble with Israel, but you and your fathers and your family, you have, you have abandoned the Lord's commandment. Amen. And have fallen out of bed. Praise God. Then he told him to go and summon the people all over Israel and beat in. Out karma and bring forth the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Ashland. Praise God. Amen. Which eat at Jezebel table. Hallelujah to God. God wanted to show Israel that he is God. God wanted to show that he was still with Elijah. God wanted to show him his power. So Elijah told him, praise God, you get your prophets, all your prophets and you build an altar, and then you get two, two amen, animals to, to slaughter for a sacrifice, and you cut it up, and you prepare them and put them on the altar, and I do the same, I take my sacrifice and put them on the altar, praise God, the same altar that you tore down that the lonely God, they got to see Isaiah around him, amen, putting the stones, the twelve stones, back around the altar that Amen. Represented the twelve tribes of Israel, and he built, rebuilt that altar, and he put, put a, a trench around it. Amen. And put the fire on the altar. Then he told him, you go out to your God. Praise God. You pray out to him, man. and the first God, the God that answers by fire. Amen. He is God. And the Bible says he called out from the morning to the evening. Amen. Calling out to God. That God and nothing happened. That God did him. And the Bible said, and I keep the men of Barbara. Praise God. Maybe your God is sleeping. Maybe he's on a journey. Amen. Maybe he's doing something else. Praise God. There's something wrong. He's not, he don't hear you. Praise God. He's not there. He's not there. And the Bible said he cut himself. Amen. And blood was dashing out. But still that God did come. But the man of God. And they doing the power of God. Amen. He got his, his altar and he called out to God and he prayed to the God of Israel. Say, God, show these people who you are. Amen. God wants to show his power. And he wants to use you and I to show his power. He wants to use you and I. Amen. That souls be saved. God didn't give up on Israel. God has chasing them that they can come to God. God loved Israel. He cried for Israel. The Lord, he, he had a love, a great love for his people. And then, praise God, the Bible tells us that fire fell from heaven. 
and it burned that altar. Hallelujah, it burned the sacrifice. Amen, it even burned the dust in the ground. Amen, God going to show himself great for us. Amen. When we look at the change, then that change will get close to our conclusion. Then that change, that fifth chapter, amen, it speaks about the rain. Before he told us about Elijah and his passions, like you and I, in that fifth verse, seventh verse, brother, he said, be patient, therefore, brother, until the coming of the Lord. He said, behold, the husband and wait, amen, for the precious fruit of the earth. And how have long patience for it. Amen, he has long patience. Amen. Because after you suffer a while, amen, you need some patience to wait on God. And that's what God was doing with Elijah. Amen. Made him patient. Put him in the wilderness. Hallelujah. To work on his patience. Put him in the far country to work on his patience. Amen. And again, in that seventh verse, say for a bit until you wait. Oh, let me start over so we can get the full context of it. It said, be patient, therefore, brother, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband and wait for the precious fruit of the earth. Now, all patience for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. Hallelujah. It's a process. Hallelujah. Before we receive our, our harvest, it has the, the latter rain has to come. The early rain has to come. I do you have to wait and go through some things of God. Amen. So he's going to be, be also patient. Amen. To establish the heart. You got to be establishing the heart that God is with me. That God is with me. That God is with me. And if God called me to do something, and if God gave me a vision, God's going to give me the provision. God is going to work it out. There's going to be a way. There's going to be an early rain. There's going to be a latter rain. And my harvest is going to come. I said the rain is going to come. Hallelujah. The rain is coming. Hallelujah. Have patience to wait on the latter and the early rain. Say, be patient. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord. Draw near. Hallelujah. Got to believe that he's coming. Hallelujah. I don't believe that it's on him. Speaking about the second coming, which is that is the ultimate coming. But I think God is coming to our rescue in his last and evil day. He said, I won't leave you. He said, I won't forsake you. He said, the Lord I'm with you. Always, hallelujah. Even when it doesn't look like he's there, he's still there. Even when it doesn't feel like he's there, he's still there. I can assure you of this one thing. If you stick with God, the rain. The rain is coming. Can you see it? Can you see it? How do you, can you feel the rain? The rain is coming. The rain is coming. So hallelujah to God. After that, Elijah, he went up and ran up to Mount Carmel. He told uh, Ahab, he said, go in and drink. There is a sound of a heavy rain. I said, the Bible tells us to just a little lot. Not sight. Not what you feel. Not by what you see. Not by one what you are uh, human told you. But the just a little by faith. And the Bible says, if any man draw back, then he has no pleasure in him. I think we got to live by faith. And Elijah had faith enough to believe. That the rain was going to come. And he acted on his faith. See, faith without work is dead. Sometimes you got to speak to some things. Sometimes you got to speak to that problem. Sometimes you got to speak to the devil himself. You got to call him a liar. This is not my faith. This is not who I am. I belong to God. And the rain is coming. I won't feel like it. I don't see it, but it's coming. The rain is coming. Oh, you got to smile sometimes. You got to smile in the face. See, when you smile, sometimes when you smile, amen, they talk about the poker face. Hallelujah, because we don't play poker. Hallelujah. 
God, but you can't let it know everything. I mean, you can't let it know you feel weak sometimes. Sometimes you gotta smile anyway. You gotta smile through it. You gotta laugh through it. You gotta sing through it. Hallelujah. And all the way you can do these things is through faith. Believe in God. Trust in God. Trust in God. Hallelujah. And say, so Ahab went and he's off to drink. When they say, Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel. Hallelujah. And he bent down to the ground and he put his face between his knees. Anybody ever had to put their face between their knees? Hallelujah to God. I say anybody had to put their face between their knees and cry out to God. Hallelujah to God. I remember when my, when my youngest son was born. Hallelujah to God. And it looked like my wife, all the other ones was, 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 was just so fast, so uh, just born. Praise God, but we had problems with my youngest son. And they and I, and I can see the frustration on the doctor's face. Hallelujah. They, they were talking about, amen, a sincerity. Glory to God. It looked like it was just trouble. My, my wife was suffering. And I, I couldn't do anything. Hallelujah to God. My brother, my head didn't do any good. I, 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 she might have wanted to hit me or kick me. Look what you got me into. Hallelujah to God. But I remember standing by that day. Hallelujah, frustrated and seeing the look and on the doctor's face and the nurse's face. And I remember sitting out in that chair in that corner. Hallelujah, I remember putting my head in between my legs. And I remember calling out to God. I remember praying to God. I remember asking God to help us, Lord. I remember asking God to deliver my wife, deliver this child. Hallelujah to God. And I got up and put them minutes. Hallelujah. Something happened. God hear you. I reflected every prayer of the righteous. Hallelujah. The righteous is a relationship. You can't wait until you're in trouble. You get a relationship with God. You got to already have it. You got that relationship, that righteous relationship. Shepherd with God, you can cry out to him, and he'll hear your cry. He'll hear your cry. Oh, yes, he will. I say, he'll hear your cry. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. I was good. I like He put his head between his legs, and he cried out to God. I believe to God. And after he cried out, he knew something was going to happen. And he called the servant to go look towards the sea. Hallelujah. And see what you see. Hallelujah to God. See if you see some rain. And some of us have been thinking, if you don't see no rain, Hallelujah. told him to go look again. And nothing happened. And told him to go look again. Hallelujah. He didn't see nothing. Seven times he told him to go out and look towards the sea and see if you see anything. And on that summer time, when he went out, he came back to the property. He said, I looked and I saw out in the midst of the sea, uh, I saw a cloud. I thought it was a little cloud. I saw something, but it didn't amount to very much. Anybody ever seen something that it, it just didn't amount to very much? Hey, man, I, I, I cried out for God for a job. And he gave me a job watching props. That didn't amount to very much. But I took that job. I took it anyway. Looked like I was going down. And the devil picked at me. He pushed at me. He mocked me. He called me a prop washing preacher. It just didn't seem like very much. I knew when the, 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 the prophet, prop, amen, sent his servant out. He saw that cloud about the size of a man's hand. He didn't, amen, send him out no more. The seal clock. He told, hey, hey, he told him to go tell Ahab. I leave, I can speak by faith. Amen, there's going to be a bucket of rain. I say, the rain is coming. How do you need to speak out, amen, to your situation? That the rain is coming. It might not be here now, but I can you see the abundance of rain. Can you see the blessings all over you? Can you see the blessings when you go out? 
Can you see it when you come in? Can you see it overtaking you? The thunders, I say, the rain is coming. It's not going to be like this all day. I say, it's not going to be like this all day. It's not going to be like this all day. Hallelujah. And so he called out the told him, said, Go and take an angel of me, Ahab. Hitch up his chariot. Go down before the rain stops me. Well, I'm gonna rain. Hallelujah. That's a good time. It wasn't much to mention, but it was a sign. God is giving you a sign. God is giving you some little clues that He's with you. God is giving you some confirmation that He's gonna do it. Some of us, God is showing Himself in visions and dreams. God is showing Himself through people. God, praise God, provided for us. Although he doesn't let us get to the land, he made a way for us. So I don't even know some of us, he didn't take us way up there and made a millionaire out of it. But God blessed us where we were. I said, God blessed us where we were. And I said, if God did that for you, why can't he do this? I said, God made a way for you then. Why can't he make a way for you now? Hallelujah. That's what he's saying in Romans. That we can glory in our tribulation. We can glory in our troubles. We can give God the praise. No matter where we are. No matter what we're in. It said Elijah was a man of the same passion. He had the same hang up. He had the same sorrow. He had the same affliction. But he prayed earnestly. Before God, if your feet are real, hallelujah, sometimes you gotta turn down your plate. Amen. It goes for two hours. Turn it down. Be serious with God. And when you're earnest, seriously. Oh my God. He says in his word, David understood. He went David fell from grace. He fell from grace. You and I, for the subject, praise God, look, let me write that up. Let me unsanitize it. You and I have fallen from the grace of God. The Bible says, all oh, have seen and come short of the glory of God. But I think God, He made the way out for me. I say he made a way out for us. Hallelujah. He made a way out for us. I say he made a way out. He made a way out for us. Oh, yes, he did. God made a way. And he's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. David fell from grace. David fell from grace. Hallelujah to God. He cried out to God. He told the Lord how. Mercy upon me, according to your, and not according to what I did, not according to who I am, but according to your love and kindness. Blot out my transgression. Hallelujah, restore. Hallelujah, I need you to help me. I need you to help me, Lord. I say, I need you to help me, Lord. Oh, God, I praise you. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. He went in his trap. He said, broken. In a contract spirit. God wants to despise. He said, he's broken. See, pride comes before destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. Broken and broken. And sometimes we ought to tell the Lord, break me. Ah. Lord, break me. I need to be broken. I need to be broken. Break me so you can reveal me. Break me, Lord, so you can reveal me. Oh, I need to be revealed and restore the joy of my salvation. Restore that joy, Lord. Restore that joy, Jesus. I 
I say the rain is coming. The rain is coming. And let me close again as we prepare for our holy communion. I read it in that first chapter. Elijah, we want to start our brother James. We want to start out with repentance, but we want to also add that thanks in the beginning of verse 15. Bible tells us, church, as we okay. It's so important. It says so in the verses. Oh, yes. It's sorry, man. He says, it's in a good group. Then a good and very good. Then he sees something. He's in a sick room. This is the word. Sorry, I'm calling. Father John. I just see the news right now. I don't know if y'all, if y'all people hear you. I'm going to see what's wrong with John and Pastor. I don't know if you can say so. It's how we look for his eyes. Oh, yes. He didn't say that. It's all right. Uh, God, he didn't say that. Oh, yeah. The first thing we do.
is a very simple and the error is made to save the soul from the world. That's what happened.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 